11. Peace be with you. Today we want to just look at the gospel and, and break it open. It helps really um, continue many of our Advent themes, just preparing to encounter Christ in a deeper way through really experiencing a deeper repentance. We see today, just to break open a couple things and comparisons, um, First, we see Jesus, our God, uh, it's more important to God to have um, life service than lip service, you know? He doesn't just want us to tell him what he wants to hear. Yes, whatever, but he wants us to actually go do it, right? And, um, same thing we expect from people who work with us or from our children. Uh, and so, but notice that Jesus is uh, comparing going out in the vineyard to those who are um, going out to John the Baptist and believing in him. And remember, belief here uh, doesn't just mean, uh, it's not just a mental thing, but to believe what John the Baptist was saying and doing meant to go out to the desert, to repent of sins, to let him immerse you in the Jordan River, and then to go back and to the promised land as a new man or a new woman. We remember that baptism is not just a physical sign of cleansing, uh, of an internal cleansing, but is also a, a sign of death and resurrection. So going down into the water is the death of the old self and those old sins or those old actions that we just repented of. And then coming up out of the water is a resurrection, a, a coming back to new life without the old. We leave the old in the waters. We smother them, we drown them, and we leave them there and then we go back uh, without them. So it, it speaks to the big change that Jesus is asking for and that he requires of those who follow him. <clears throat> so we notice here, we see too, the, the emphasis on repentance is not just saying, I'm sorry for sinning. That's not repentance. Repentance is not saying, I'm sorry for sinning. Repentance means change. The word means change. So to repent is to say, yeah, okay, I'm sorry, or I did something wrong, and here's what I'm going to do right going forward. Here's how I'm going to change. And we see that emphasis a couple times, the word change. <clears throat> the son who said, I will not, later he changed his mind. And so to repent, to go to confession, is to say, I'm, I'm changing my mind about how I'm living my life or I'm changing my mind about certain actions in my life. I'm, I'm changing the way I think of those things, and that's going to lead to a, a change in actions. I'm changing my mind that will lead to a change of actions. So when we repent, we're admitting, I'm, I'm changing. I need to change. I want to change. I'm asking God's help for change. It's time for a change. Again, we see the same, that same emphasis uh, tax collectors and prostitutes going out to John because they believed. Uh, but you, you chief priests, you elders, even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe. So repentance is all about a change of our life. <clears throat> that switches up confession all, all together, huh? You can't, it doesn't do any good to just say, I'm sorry. You have to say, here's how I'm going to change, God. Now we have a complete confession. Um, <clears throat> this is very difficult. This is all Jesus is asking for. Um, he does not, notice too that Jesus, he goes after everybody. If we look at the Gospels as a whole, especially even today, him going after these chief priests and elders, he goes after everybody. His goal, his first goal, is to make everybody recognize that they are a sinner. He wants to make us all feel as, that we're bad sinners. He does. He doesn't care if we, if we feel bad about it. He wants us to recognize, I'm a sinner. If, if I, until I recognize I'm a sinner, I also will not recognize I need a Savior. So he goes after everybody. He wants everybody to recognize they're a sinner in need of God's mercy. We see this a lot uh, in the Sermon on the Mount. He goes after everybody, doesn't he? If you have even thought lustfully in your mind about somebody, you've already committed adultery, mortal sin, 
If you've been angry in your mind about, at somebody, you've already committed murder, mortal sin. He goes after everybody. I like the, well, watching The Chosen season two and Matthew, the tax collector, the changed tax collector. When he hears that, he says, but Jesus, that's, that's everybody. <laughs> that's all of us. And he just smiles. Mm-hmm. We all need the change. Jesus knows he doesn't get mad that we're sinners. He doesn't get upset in the gospel that we're sinners. He gets upset in the gospel when people are refusing to admit that they're sinners, when they think they don't have to change. And that's how we recognize the difference between the Christian lifestyle and also just the non-Christian or the worldly lifestyle, the anti-Christian lifestyle, is that we recognize... Christians say, yeah, we recognize sins and we're all trying to live together as sinners and we're working on change together with God's mercy. The world tells us, so, so Jesus tells us, yep, that's a sin and we need to work on changing that. And, and so if you follow me, that, that's going to be a process of change. The world tells you and I, you don't have to change. What, how you're living, what you're doing is you don't have to change. People should accept you the way you are and tolerate you. And whatever lifestyle, it's okay. You don't have to change. And then they'll even throw the little, even the, the worldly Christians who are confused, they'll say, that's right, you don't have to change. God loves you just the way you are. And he does love us just the way we are. And we don't have to change in order to be loved by God, but we have to change in order to love God. If we're going to return love to God, we have to change. Because, remember, one of the things Jesus says in the gospel, if you love me, if you're loving me right now, you will obey my commandments. It means you will, you will change. You will do what I'm asking you to do. If you, if you love me. So, yeah, we don't have to change in order to be loved by God. God loves everybody the same with all that he is, the sinner and the repentant sinner. But if we want to love God in return, we do have to change. If we want to give him back that love, to do with the commandments and follow Jesus. So that's what, that's what Jesus is after, a changed heart, a changed mind. How are you and I, maybe we've already gone to confession this Advent season, uh, we've said sorry for some sins, but how have we gone the next final step and said, here's what I'm, what I'm changing in my life so, that, so that, that won't continue. Here's what I'm changing so those old actions, those sins die. I don't give them life anymore in me. All about change. <clears throat> it's scary to change. Notice some of these chief priests and elders probably didn't want to change because everybody who, everybody who was going to John the Baptist that was changing their whole lifestyle. The prostitute is no longer a prostitute. There goes her whole livelihood. She's got to find a new job. The tax collector, there goes his whole livelihood. Now he's not a tax collector anymore. He's got to find a new job. You know, poor Peter and James and John and Andrew, they were just fishermen. Now they follow Jesus. Now they got to find a new job, you know. Sometimes following Jesus means big changes of your whole life and your livelihood. That can be scary. And maybe sometimes we don't want to be willing to give up all that. So change is serious, but it's what Jesus wants. How is the Holy Spirit stirring up your heart this Advent season to change more towards Christ? Father, we thank you so much for your truth and your, for your love, for always loving us, just as we are but loving us so much you don't want to leave us where we are and you want to teach us how to love you in return. We pray you would just continue to fill us with your Holy Spirit and, and just highlight for us uh, some area of our life where, where you'd like us to change, to be more like Jesus. We pray all these things together in Jesus' name, amen. Let us stand together and 